Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and to part two of my how to stop thinning the golf ball series, where I'll be talking about yet another movement that a lot of people suffer from that will make it more likely for you to hit the top of that golf ball and hit that annoying shot that just kind of dribbles along the ground. So last week we kind of talked about the radial deviation and ulnar deviation kind of in the downswing and through impact and how that affects your ability to um, hit the ground. Now this week's video, I'm going to talk about the tilt. So the tilt is just kind of bending your body from right to left, kind of side to side, um, how that affects your, your distance away from the ground and how you can practice it, a few drills that you can focus on um, just to help you stop that dreaded thin shot. And if you guys want to send in your swings to me so that I can kind of accurately or more specifically give you a better recommendation of what drills to do, then you can visit my skillless profile. It's in the description box below the link. And once you click on that, you can give my profile a follow and you should be received some automatic messages um, that will show you how to film yourself and also um, a link that will allow you to upload videos to me directly. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content in the future. Okay, so the issue I kind of want to describe today, um, again, like I was saying, has to do with tilts. Okay, so that's kind of your the angle in the shoulders, kind of in the backswing, and also the angle of your shoulders uh, in the follow through. So when I see a, a player top the golf ball or thin the golf ball, oftentimes there's some sort of change in posture in the backswing to where there's not the shoulders are a lot more level to the ground. Okay, you can kind of see how my knees kind of dig under me and my head kind of raises backwards. That gets my shoulders a lot more level. And when I come down, if my shoulders are also not tilted enough in the follow through, then that will change kind of the distance of my arms and, and the club head uh, away from the ground. Okay, so if I kind of raise out of it, shoulders are level, then also my shoulders are a lot more level on the way through. And that kind of pulls everything away from the ground this way, right? And I'm less likely to hit the ground in the right place. So ideally what we'd want is wherever your posture is at address, when you make that backswing, you can see that I'm kind of turning around my posture. And as I come down and I go through it, I'm again turning around my posture kind of in the follow through. You never want your posture to kind of change drastically throughout the swing, kind of like this, okay? So I'm gonna go over some drills um, or give you guys a better visual with some alignment sticks. Um, and this can also be used as kind of a rehearsal to get a feel for things um, that you guys can also try out. All right, so the first thing that you guys can do if you got some alignment sticks is I've, I've just put one through uh, my belt loops here. Okay, so it's right straight across my hip. Um, and then you can just kind of gently place this near the top, top of your shoulders here, okay? Uh, and just rest them here like this. So if you are using a mirror or, I mean, you can look visually kind of at the extensions beyond each shoulder, but when you make this backswing, you can see if I'm turning correctly, you know, my, my shoulders and hips aren't going to be totally level to the ground. Okay. So when you turn your hip correctly, you change that knee flex in your lower body. That's, that's going to allow your hips to turn, but also kind of remain, remain on a little bit of a tilted angle as we do that. Okay, if you keep your knees straight and you try to turn, it's, it's going to be a lot more level to the ground. Okay, so what you want to kind of look for in the backswing is when you're making your turns, you want to see that the extensions um, beyond your lead shoulder and your lead hip, lead side of the hip, um, aren't, they don't have to be like this. Okay, and that's, not, that's not what you're trying to do. Okay. But you want to make sure, like, if, if you're going back and you're getting it more level, you, you'll see a, a fairly wide gap kind of between um, the lead, lead uh, shoulder extension and the lead side of the hip extension. It needs to remain, you know, getting a little bit closer, okay? And especially in the downswing, you want to make sure that your lead shoulder, uh, the trail shoulder extension and the uh, trail side hip extension is getting a little bit closer together as well. Okay. Now, um, 
for the purpose of this drill, you don't have to like worry about when, where the extension is relative to each other. Okay. I would say that if anything, you'd want to see that the extension on the trail shoulder maybe is just very, very slightly on the behind the uh, hip extension. So you don't want to see it go down like this way. So you see how it's in front. You want to see it kind of just trail behind the hip extension just, just a little bit. Okay. So from that front view, if I go back, okay. And then when I go down and through, you can see that the uh, shoulder is slightly behind. Now you don't have to do this. Okay. You don't have to create this big separation here. You want it to be a little bit behind. Okay. And if you were kind of level to the ground, you'd see that these sticks never really cross or intersect each other coming down. Okay. So in the backswing gets a little bit closer in the downswing also gets a little bit closer. Okay. So this is a good visual, um, for you to have kind of while you're, while you're kind of rehearsing this, but if you have a mirror, that's even better. Okay. But when you do this a couple times, make sure that you can actually focus on not moving your head uh, forward and backwards as well. So in the back swing, if you're trying to get this, you know, the, the, the extensions really close together, you're going to find that your head actually moves forward. Okay. And down. So you don't want to move your head. You just want to turn, make sure everything's kind of getting a little bit closer. Same thing in the follow through just a little bit closer. You're not trying to exaggerate these things like crazy. Okay. So that's drill number one. Okay. So, uh, exercise number two is to actually focus on where your follow through ends. Okay. And that's also going to allow you to focus on, uh, the tilts. Okay. So I want you to follow this process. Um, and it's a, it's a three-step process really. But I'll show you from the face on view, but you're just going to move all of your weight into your lead foot. Okay. You see how I just moved my entire body, like basically right on top of my left leg. Okay. So all of my weights on my left. So now all I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to rotate my body. So I'm just going to turn and face the target. And then the last step is I'm going to bend my body to the right. Okay. And then from there, I'm just going to extend my arms out just so that my arms are like directly in front of my chest. Okay. Even my head is on a slight, uh, tilt. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not looking with my head really straight. My head is also tilted with my shoulders. Okay. So getting into this position here, it's going to give me a sense of where I'm going to try to end up, uh, post impact. Okay. Which I think is the most effective way. Um, I think it's really difficult for people to feel things mid downswing because it happens so quickly. But if you can focus on ending up in this position, then it's very likely that through the hitting area, um, you're going to be able to make some adjustments there. Okay. So I'm going to explain that same thing from the side view. So right now I'm just putting all of my weight all on my left side. Okay. And then I'm just going to turn my body to face the target. And then I'm just going to tilt my body to the right. So you can even see that my, my lower body, my hip also kind of tilts just a little bit on that angle my weight moves to the outside heel of my lead foot. Okay. And that's important that as you tilt, if your weight stays kind of on the, on the toe side of your feet, as you tilt, you're going to probably feel like you're falling over this way. Okay. So when you get into that position and you tilt, your weight has to be displaced kind of this way. Your hip is displaced this way as your chest and your, your shoulders tilt to the right. Okay. Then you're just going to, Extend your arms out, hands in front of the chest. Okay. So this is what it should look like right here. Okay. So that way, when you do go to hit the golf ball, you can try to get in that same position, um, after holding it for a few seconds. Okay. So another, uh, pretty cool angle is from, is from here, just hitting towards you guys. So again, up top, put my, all of my weight on my left foot. I'm going to turn and face you guys. And then I'm going to tilt my shoulder to my trail side, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about, uh, with the foot You can see how my weight, the majority of my weight goes into the outer part of my lead heel. 
it's okay for this part of the toe to come off the ground just a little bit. Okay, but you can see I'm kind of like this, shoulders tilted, and then I just put my hands kind of directly in front of my chest. So that's where I'm trying to end up. Okay, so I'm going back, I go through, I'm trying to end up there, exactly where I started. Now just remember that when you're focusing on tilts, the main purpose is to minimize movement kind of towards or away from the ground, okay? We want to be able to learn how to turn around our spine in the backswing and then turn around our spine kind of in the follow through so that you can maintain your distance away from the ground. If you change the posture and you, and you kind of change the amount of tilts throughout the backswing, downswing and follow through, again, you're going to be changing your distance away from the ground and that's going to affect, you know, how you extend or, or bend your right arm through the downswing. So if you come back and you come down and you start to raise away from the ground, then unconsciously you're going to want to actually extend out your right arm early in order to compensate for your, for your body to move moving away. You have, you have to do something in order for your club to reach the ground. So you're going to start to make all these compensations, and that's not good for consistency. Okay? So the best drill that I would recommend um, that'll give you a really good sense and, and really good for rehearsing really anywhere is to um, you can actually put your club down and you can actually place um, just your hands down like this but um, I won't I don't have a wall here but you can actually just draw an imaginary line straight down from the edge of my head your head's pretty much against that that wall and this is a, it, a, people a lot of people laugh at this drill because you're just putting your head against the wall, but um, this is really, really good for you to rehearse. But with your hands kind of hanging down, head leaning gently against the wall, as you turn, you're going to feel if, you, if your head goes forward, by, because you're going to obviously slam your face in the wall, but, or if you change your posture, your head's going to move away from the wall. All right, so it's going to really fix your head position and make sure that when you turn, you can focus on kind of keeping your tilt, keeping your left shoulder low, while also making sure that your head stays in the same place. And then when you also go through it, if you can keep your head in the same spot, then it'll, it'll, it'll kind of force you to have to get your body to stay bent to one side, okay? So if you can do that in the backswing and in the fall through and rehearse that, that's also something that really keeps you in that really key position um, to feel like you're turning around your spine kind of throughout the swing. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to respond back uh, as quickly as I can and just kind of clarify things for you. Uh, be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss, uh, where you can send me a message and ask me more details about my online lesson programs. But until next time, I will see you guys on part three.